Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Thanksgiving weekend. I know I am, and I actually found some time to get another discontinued Kershaw knife from my uh, discontinued uh, Kershaw collection. Uh, this collection's kind of slowed down quite a bit. I'm not really buying a ton of these anymore, but if I see one that, uh, kind of sparks my interest that I think should go in my collection of, uh, Kershaw discontinued knives and I have to buy it, uh, again, I have to apologize for my hands, you know, they, they're peeling, they're cracking, there's nothing I can do. I continue to put lotion on it, uh, you know, it's just one of those... Uh, conditions that can't be helped. So let's get right into this knife. So this is another Kershaw discontinued knife. Uh, this knife came out, like I'm going to say it came out right around maybe 2007 and they discontinued it right around 2011, around that time. Uh, but this is definitely one that was very, very popular because it was one of the Kershaw knives that came out uh, in a higher-end steel because at that time, uh, Kershaw was mostly putting out a lot of uh, Sandvik 14C28N, and that was basically all they had. Maybe an occasional uh, S30V piece, and this is we're talking about the days before Zero Tolerance came out, uh, and, and Kershaw kind of laid away from the higher end stuff so this is one of those supposedly higher end knives at that time so let's go ahead and pull it out take a look and see what i got here uh you guys probably may have seen this knife uh it's no stranger to a lot of people what we are looking at here is the kershaw camber now this one uh i picked up on ebay the guy actually had it stowed away in his closet he never even opened it uh, this is completely brand new mint sitting in someone's closet. And I thought, man, for that, for that price, I really ought to consider uh, picking it up and adding it to my collection. So I did. Um, and I actually have two of these guys. So you want to look on eBay. Uh, probably this weekend I'll be selling the other one. The other Kershaw uh, camber piece that I have it's got a couple of dings on it. It's not as mint as this one, but it's still in really good shape. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into this piece right here. So this is the Kershaw Camber. This is an in-house design knife um, made by Kershaw. One of the most unattractive things that I don't like about the knife right off the bat is you can see the Kershaw smack dab in the middle with in big, huge letters uh, with Speed Safe USA written on it. That I'm not too crazy about. I think they could have done that a little bit more subtly. Uh, but let's go ahead and get back, get right back into the knife. So the Kershaw Camber knife is pretty much um, a regular EDC carry. Uh, it is one of the knife offerings back at that time that had a subframe lock. As you guys can see, your subframe lock is where they. Uh, have the it's not a full it's not a full liner lock basically they screw in a piece of metal inside the uh the handle of the knife and it only uh the only thing you have to kind of push out of the way is this little tiny piece of metal that's inside of it so it's it's not a full frame lock which would be from top all the way down to the end of the knife. This one is, as you can see on the inside, they've actually screwed it in there. And it's sort of what they call a subframe lock mechanism. So this is also a spring-assisted knife, something very popular with Kershaw at the time. Uh, Kershaw now is kind of laying away from the uh, spring-assisted blades and going back into manual. They keep going back and forth between uh, spring-assisted knives and then the manual knives. And now I think they're actually going away again a little bit from the manual knives and getting back into the spring assist. So Let's go ahead and do the specs for this piece, and then I'll talk about what the knife is made of and all, all of that. So the uh, overall blade length for this piece is 3 inches. The overall length is 7.25 inches. The blade material 
is Happily S30V Steel with a stone wash finish on it, which means stone wash is always kind of nice, so is black wash. You can beat the hell out of the knife, and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, scratches showing up on it. It'll just blend right in with the, uh, with the stone wash finish on there. Uh, the handle material is called Tech or Trek Inserts. And what Trek Inserts is, um, a little hard to describe. It's kind of like um, the Welcome Mat Green Carpet that everybody has in their, you know, on their welcome mat. You know, that, that sort of rough exterior. That's pretty much what this material feels like. And they have it over on this end of the knife and down here on the bottom for grip. Um, like I said, it's a spring-assisted opening. The weight of the knife is 0.281 ounces. And it is made in the good old USA. That is basically what Kershaw is famous for, making knives made in the USA. So let's take a good quick look at the piece. Uh, the knife has all aluminum scales. Aluminum is a really good uh, material um, to use on knives. Titanium obviously being premium. Um, but yeah, aluminum does the job just as well. Love the all black look on the piece. We have a black deep pocket carry clip right over there. And it is only uh, on this side and on that side over there. That's all you can put the clip on. There's no way you can, you can't put it over here and you can't put it over there. So it's a two-way clip, um, making it a righty and a lefty knife. So that's kind of nice. The back spacer looks like it is, I'm going to say it's plastic, basically. Uh, I don't really think that the, the back spacer is anything uh, special. Looks like it is plastic on there. Uh, the main feature on the knife is the, um, the blade itself, which is S30V. S30V steel at that time was considered a very high-end steel before, you know, all the much, much higher-end steels came in, like M390 and all those other, uh, you know, CTS uh, 204P, which is obviously the same as M390. Uh, it's right around there in that, you know, uh, a little bit lower than, the, than those high-end super steels, uh, but it is definitely a lot better than the 14C28N that uh, Kershaw was pumping out at that time. So let's go ahead and do some size comparison so you guys can see the size of this knife. Let's go ahead and put it up against uh, the Zero Tolerance 0562. And one of my uh, favorite discontinued knives, the Zero Tolerance uh, Zero 0900. Another sweet piece. I love this knife. Definitely love this one. I've done a video on that already. You can check that out. I will be doing a full review on this knife uh, soon. <laughs> Get around to doing that. So there it is up against the Zero 0900. Uh, how about up against the Benchmade Anthem? Which is a much larger knife. One of my all-time favorites, the Michael Janish Yojimbo 2. So as you guys can see, this is a medium to small knife. Not very large, just perfect for your everyday EDC carry. It's, you know, obviously non-threatening with the drop point blade. Um, it's got a nice drop point blade on it. This knife is very, very sharp, by the way. And again, I forgot to bring out some paper uh, so I could show you how sharp the knife is. Um... The design of the blade is kind of nice. It's got this nice sort of swedge over here on the side. I do like that. Like I said, the ergos on this knife were just great. They're great. Very basic, very simple, um, but just good. Overall great. Great ergos on that. 
And finally, for the size comparison, let's do my favorite, small, medium, large. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So we'll put it up against the zero tolerance 0562. And then how about up against the small uh, Chris Reeve and Kosi. So there you have it. Uh, size comparison completed. We got... Uh, Large, medium, and small, and the Kershaw uh, camber comes in at right around the, the uh, medium size knife. So it's just an absolute perfect EDC. So the knife is, I mean, the, the knife is not made with premium materials. It's a perfect example of Kershaw coming out with a, a not really a low-budget knife, because this knife at the time went for, I'm, I, I believe this knife went for right around $80. Um, no, not $80, I'm sorry. Anywhere between like uh, $95 to like $120 on this piece because of the blade being S30V steel. Um this was definitely one of their medium offerings. Um, they didn't have very many at the time. Uh, in fact, this may have been only maybe one of maybe five medium offerings with the really good steel and the really good materials on the knife. Kershaw did that back then. Uh, just to kind of introduce the buying public to something different. Uh, they, were, they were doing that ever, ever, ever so often with their lineup back in the early 2000s where they would pump out the regular uh, 14C28N knives and then they'd come out with something like this just to kind of break up the monotony and to show you what's available and what what they, you know, what they have that's out there. Um, because some company had to, had to introduce, you know, knives right around that, that are going up in, you know, going up in the materials, going up in the uh, steel. That was definitely necessary back then because, you know, after a while... Uh, you know, knife companies began to realize that, you know, you can only have your fill of 14C28N before you experience all you possibly can from that steel. So they would come out with something like this. Um, this is definitely one for the collection. I mean, like I said, this is just really for nostalgic purposes that I have this knife. Uh, I'm such a big Kershaw fan. I know a lot of you guys are, too. Uh, the concept of every knife being made in the USA, there's something, you know... It just gets to everybody, uh, everybody um, that way when it comes to buying American-made products. It's just something that's important to all of us. Um, and I always kind of like to buy knives so I can see where, you know, what the knife company ha has done before, where they are now, and where they're going into the future. It's just sort of like a map of uh, where these knife companies are going to go next, you kind of think. Um I really am really happy to have this piece because it is really, really mint. I mean, I, I would be very surprised if you guys can find something just as mint as this for the price. The guy sold it to me for $125. Uh, I saw it in pictures and I thought, wow, uh, if this thing is, you know, is as shiny and new, I, I, could better, I could better grab this one real quick. So so I had to I had to have it for my, uh, my Kershaw collection. Like I said, I do have two of these Kershaw cambers. One of these, will, this one will be going up for sale. Uh, I'll be giving up a pretty de decent price on this one. As you can see, there's a, you know, slight differences between these two. This one's kind of worn. I don't know what this material is. I've been trying to wipe that white stuff off. I don't know what that is. Uh, but as you can see, the knife has all also been a little bit more sharpened by the person that actually owned it last. And if I um, show you on here, you'll see that this this version of the knife has a couple of dings and scratches on it. There's a scratch right there and a scratch right there as opposed to the super mint one that I got that has nothing on it. I mean, it's just, it's like straight right out of the box. So if you're interested in, in a Kershaw camber, uh, I will be putting this one up on eBay for a very decent price. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not even going to be $100 for this. I will put this up for, for anyone that's interested in getting one of these. This will be a great beater um, piece for you. If you really just need a really good knife to keep in the car or whatever, um, this will be perfect for you. Uh, not much more to say on it. Like I said, it is a discontinued piece. Uh, 
that they no longer make. Like I said, I, ba I basically got this knife for collective purposes. And the fact that I wound up getting, you know, with two of these, because I thought that this one was going to be as mint as this one, and it wasn't. And I was really disappointed in it when I saw the two dings on there because, you know, I want this collection, the my Kershaw collection, to be, you know, primo. That's just the way I am, so... Uh, and I will be doing uh, a quick rundown on all my Kershaw knives. I'm going to bring them all out in my next video. Uh, probably it's going to be like a four-part video series because I've got a lot of these Kershaws that are brand new in boxes. I don't plan on selling it just yet, as far as I know. Uh, so we'll see what, what's going to happen with the collection. I might sell it. I'm more than likely right now I'm telling you I'm not uh, because I'm still collecting the Kershaw stuff, so... There you have it, the Kershaw Camber. I wish I had more to say on it. Like I said, it's just a collector's piece now. And uh, you will be seeing this guy up on eBay if you're interested in purchasing it. Uh, like I said, I will be putting it up on eBay for a very decent price. Uh, anybody that is interested in buying this, please make a comment and uh, comment with me and we'll get together and you know maybe I won't have to put it up on eBay. We'll just uh, you know talk it out see what you're willing to pay for this piece um like i said it's a really good knife uh really nice ergonomics on there not premium materials but really good materials with all the uh, with aluminum scales the tech trek the tech trek inserts you know are really great on there s30v steel you can't go wrong and like i said i am going to sell this for less than a hundred bucks so there you have it the kershaw camber uh, discontinued knife by Kershaw. Sorry to see it go. You know, I thought maybe they should have done more colors on this knife. Maybe <laughs> revamp it. Maybe get rid of the big gigantic Kershaw Speed Safe USA on there. You know, just I just didn't think it was a good idea to do that. They could have had that done a little bit more subtly. I don't know, maybe smaller on this side over here. Uh, you know, but there you have it, the Kershaw Camber. This is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off, hoping you'll find this fantastic collector's piece in your collection, whatever type of collection you have this someday. And I will see you in my next video. I do have a brand new custom piece coming uh, from another well-known South African knife maker, so I can't wait to pick up, get that from him. Uh, I will uh, see you guys then. In the meantime... Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you all, and happy night hunting. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great evening.